Do you think the Fed is still going to cut rates at the end of this month? Yeah, I think you're going to get 25 basis points cut this month. I think putting it as an insurance rate cut is the right way. The economy is not in trouble. Today's employment report actually is very good news for the economy, and it's good news long term for the markets. Mike, uh, Mike Faroli at J.P. Morgan Mohammed basically said, if you ask me why they're going to cut, I could come up with something like it's an insurance cut or risk management. But basically, I think they're going to cut because they've told us that they will. <laughs> Is there an element of truth to that, that the Fed has signaled this cut so clearly that they can't really backtrack now? Yeah, I think he's absolutely right. Um, and they cannot afford another miscommunication. Kelly, I think we've got to look beyond the Fed in two ways. One is a more realistic pricing of Fed expectations. We, we as the marketplace, had gotten carried away, carried away thinking it will be 50 basis points in July, thinking we're going to get three cuts by the end of the year. We're going to get one in July and maybe, maybe two, and that's about it. Hmm. And secondly, it's about time we narrow the gap between elevated asset prices and fundamentals. And that's what today's employment report is starting to do. Okay. And Peter, I still, you know, I, I understand the way that this is a slow moving machine, the Fed is, but is cutting rates because they've already kind of signaled that they're going to do so really a great reason to cut rates? Absolutely not. But Powell had the opportunity to pull back market expectations going into the June meeting. But instead, all he did is reaffirm what the bond market was pricing in. Powell is now a prisoner of the bond market. And to say six weeks before the July meeting and sort of pigeonhole himself and to say, yeah, maybe we do two or three rate cuts and maybe we even cut 50 in the July meeting. Well, that's not really being why, data dependent. For sure. You're right. But, but here's the thing. If we had this sense that all they're doing is telling us some possible scenarios, why does it have to be that just because he floats that possibility, it means it's a definite, right? Why couldn't he come back and next week when he's on Capitol Hill, why can't he say, yeah, that was the scenario then, but the scenario now might be different. I mean, couldn't they be that flexible? Well, they should be, but he, he's got to be more careful with his words. And that's been the history of Jay Powell, as he hasn't been so careful. He's got to be better at playing the middle ground, leaving it open-ended as to what they're going to do. And we have to take a step back. The bond market's already eased for the Fed. If you're looking to buy a house, your mortgage rate is 75 basis points below than it was a year ago. Oh, so yeah. the bond market's already done a lot of the heavy lifting. And to this point of an insurance cut, I think the concept of an insurance cut is pure hubris. To think that they can sort of tweak here and there and make everything just okay, I think is a mistake. In 1995, when they did it, we were only four years into a recovery. Mm -hmm. In 1998, it led the spark for the greatest uh, bubble in the history of the stock well, market. Well, not just that we had had the Asian financial crisis. I mean, there were a lot of things that were happening then that don't look as severe now.